Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 830 a.m. Thursday morning. Markets going in both directions. Right now, we're in the red. You get the Dow futures off 164 points, trading 24,402. S&P negative by 17, trading at 29.23. NASDAQ futures negative by six points, trading at 9,029. As we speak, awaiting the weekly jobless claims number, that number going to hit 3.8 million. Got to love the Tigers, Dan, folks. They got that information in there before I could find it anywhere else. Uh, uh, 3.8 million weekly jobless claims, that number coming in. You see a little bit of volatility happening in the S&Ps on that number, but still in lower territory, off about a half a percent right now. Jumping over to the commodities, gold contract up about $12 at 17.26. Gold had made a high at about 3.45 this morning of 17.37. Oil contract catching a bit as well. Check out that acceleration, $17.29 up from a low of $10.07 just early Tuesday. I mean, you're talking about, that's basically five in the morning on Tuesday. You're talking about 50 hours, five zero. You go from 10 up to 17.25, up about 14% right now. You know what I didn't cover yesterday, which I meant to cover, was Bitcoin's run on the program. Check that out. Bitcoin from 7,800 up to 9,500, and that is at about two in the morning. You dip down to six in the morning to all the way down to about 8,800. So moves there in uh, Bitcoin. And jumping back to the other charts, we'll start things off. We'll start it off with the indices. Dow 30 making it to a high of 24,784. Pretty muted response on that jobless claims number. The market basically, I guess, expecting 3.84, pretty much in line. We've now hit over 30 million over the last six weeks for weekly jobless claims. Why not? We'll pull that headline over. There it is. 30 million over the last six weeks. Weekly jobless claims were expected to hit 3.5, so we come in at 3.84, pretty close to that number, all things considered. Jumping over to other stories we have happening this morning, we got a bunch of earnings already out, whether it's last night, whether it's this morning, and of course, we get some big numbers. Uh, Amazon out today, among and many others. Uh, Apple as well, I believe. Twitter shares out with their earnings. Let's jump right into the equities. Strong first quarter results despite expected downturn from coronavirus. Twitter pulled its guidance for the quarter at the end of March, blaming the coronavirus for the slowdown. Getting into the numbers, earnings per share 11 cents, revenue 808 million. Wall Street had been anticipating earnings per share of 10 cents on 776 million. Twitter shares. This morning, there's your volatility, spike up to 35.50. The conference call beginning at about 8 a.m., not going well, I would say. Not sure what's being said on that conference call, but we've had quite a slide from 33 to under 30 now on that conference call. Other news, how about last night we had Facebook out with their numbers. Soars after reporting stability in ad revenue after fall in March. Boy, these tech companies pretty much uh, knocking it out of the park so far. The company's revenue came in at $17.74 billion, up nearly 18% from $15 billion a year ago. I mean, remarkable, right? It counts 2.99 billion monthly users across its family of apps compared to 2.89 billion. I bet Zuckerberg wanted a three there, but I bet they'll get there next, uh, next quarter regardless. Facebook shares, there's your action on that news. How about the spike last night from 195 to 217? We're at about 209.89. Of course, jumping around Google, you had quite the acceleration on their earnings last night. Amazon catching a bid this morning from 23.72. We're bid uh, bidding 24.22 by 24.24 right now on the price of Amazon. Other news items uh, for earnings: How about Elon Musk continuing to make a name for himself? Uh, Quinn went on an quote-unquote expletive-laced rant during the Tesla earnings call, talking about the stay-at-home orders as fascist. I was seeing some of these quotes. There's your quote there, forcibly imprisoning people in their homes against their constitutional rights, but that's my opinion, and breaking people's freedoms in ways that are horrible. Well, that's his opinion. That was the Tesla earnings call. Regardless of that sideshow going on, Tesla delivering in a big way from 800 we're at about 863 right now. You made it all the way up to 886 on the Tesla numbers last night. Let's see if they have the actual numbers in there. See, here's the bummer, right? He goes on this expletive-laced rant. I pull up an article, 
And they don't even talk about what Tesla actually did. Why is he taking away from great numbers that they had? Um, it's a bummer he continues that sideshow. Microsoft stock also rising on earnings beat and better than expected guidance. So Azure revenue growth came in at 62%, higher than what some analysts have predicted. That is their cloud. Earnings a buck 51, excluding certain items versus a dollar 32 expected. How about this beat? Revenue 36.91 billion versus 35.68. You're talking about one. $1.23 billion in 90 days of extra revenue while this is all going on. Of course, Microsoft entrenched in a lot of what we do online. Microsoft Teams getting a lot of action, pairing some of the gains we had last night from 177 up to 186, back to about 180 right now on Microsoft opening a bit higher. Pretty muted response so far on that weekly jobless claims number. Just checking back in on the S&Ps. You see the slide from where we were at about... Yes, this is last night at about midnight, 29.65 was the high there. Zooming it back out, there's your trading day yesterday, trading higher and uh, 29.65 overnight, but we're at about 29.28. So you're approaching about 40 points off the highs that we had last night. Jumping back into it, I'm gonna talk about this one early because in 24 minutes from right now, Tom's gonna be hosting his Timing the Trade webinar. Still time to sign up. You sign up, you instantly gain access to the webinar starting at nine o'clock. That'll be archived. If you can't attend live, if you can't get into the chat room, if you're just on mobile, you're somewhere you can't access it, all of it's gonna be archived. Nine till noon, a lunch break, and then one till four, six hours in there with Tom. It's a great time to be in there for a Time of the Trade webinar, folks. You also gain market insights, his daily newsletter. You get a copy of his book, uh, worth the $3.95 by itself without any of that, but you get a couple add-ons and that will be archived. That starts at nine o'clock. And I'm gonna be doing the show with Basil Chapman at 10 o'clock this morning. He's gonna be filling in the saddle, um, filling in that seat for Tom. I'm looking forward to getting his take on some of these peaks and troughs. Basil did a one-day webinar a couple weeks ago as well. You can actually still find that webinar under the services tab if you'd like to check out that archive. But Tom's going on live this morning 23 minutes from right now check that out on the front page of tfnn and while you're at it the open house this running through tomorrow the last day folks we've been running this um started it during quarantine it was almost like probably six weeks ago that we started this amazing enough and uh we're running it through the month of april we're gonna let it run out may 1st tomorrow how about that tomorrow right may 1st it sure is may 1st so this will run through tomorrow check out the open house folks this morning as i mentioned i'm refreshing cnbc out there and uh our man peter from park city has got 3.8 million jobs announced in the den before i could find it anywhere else always good stuff in there checking back as we wrap up the first segment the VIX, 32.55, and we're getting a little bit of a sell-off. Maybe we'll have a little market action for that timing the trade webinar as the S&Ps now approaching the pre-market session lows down 20 points. Check out Tom's webinar, folks, on the front page of TFNN.com. Sign, right, sign up right now. You'll be ready for that 9 o'clock start. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476. 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, S&P is slipping a bit now at 29.18. We're now at pre-market session lows. You see a little bit of a sell-off. Since 835, we've dropped about 12 points in those S&Ps. The Dow now off about 208, trading 24,359. Jumping back to the news of the day, uh, I wanted to get, where were we? No. I was looking at this might be the best month for the markets. I had something. There we go. So stock surged on Wednesday. The S&P 500 is up more than 13% for the month. Now, we just went over it. This is the last trading day of the month right now, tomorrow, May 1st. S&P is up more than 13% for the month and on track for its biggest one-month gain since 1974. Dow's up 12% in April, which would be its best month since 1987. Right on the board, though, the month is not over just yet. We got a lot to go, too, in terms of earnings. So we do get uh amazon and apple after the bell today jumping into other stocks with action mcdonald's earnings falling 17 percent as coronavirus leads to restaurant closures plunging sales so even with the drive throughs packed mcdonald's not keeping up with where they were mcdonald's said in early april that same store sales fell 3.4 percent during the first three months of the year the company's earnings fell 17 percent withdrew its 2020 outlook and long-term forecast issued just in february Earnings per share, $1.47, $1.47, revenue, $4.71 billion. Um, net sales dropped 6% to that $4.71 billion. So McDonald's down a bit on that news this morning. I was looking at them earlier. You were up to about $1.90 on that number. Now, the conference call... Just beginning at 8.30 when I came on the air, but you got McDonald's down about $4 from $187 to $183 right now on that news. What else we have happening? Jumping over to other equities, uh, Zoom, I wanted to talk about for a moment. So they chose Oracle as their cloud provider and uh, Microsoft and Google not winning that contract and not surprising folks when you think about the deal made more sense wednesday after cloud infrastructure providers google and microsoft made it clear that they're going after zoom's core business reason why i want to talk about this be very careful with this company zoom they might be around for a while the world has definitely changed on a longer term basis um we're going to be communicating whether it's microsoft teams whether it's google duo i don't even know what google they might google it must have a hangout right i think they wrap that one up but uh just the run, though, that we had from where this began, you could say, in February, 
at a price point of 77. You made to 181 and the volatility here. They have to convert people from free accounts to paid accounts to make money, number one, or they have to start dealing with businesses that will pay them for their services. And they have to do that in the face of competing with Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, why not, right? Um, tough sector to be in, especially when you have to live up to the growth that your stock just doubled in a period of three months. Um, be interesting to see how that all shakes out for Zoom. Macy's, they're gonna be having all of their stores open in six weeks. It expects to have, it's roughly 775 stores reopened in six weeks should COVID-19 infection rates taper off and local governments allow retailers to proceed. All the Macy's stores have been shut down since March 19th, going on almost six weeks. Macy's shares, and um, in Florida, not sure I agree with it or not, um, but we're gonna start opening back up on Monday. Retailers are gonna be allowed to be open with 25% capacity, restaurants, um, similar fashion, I believe. Um, not yet opened, talking about movie theaters, nail salons, salons of those sorts, but 20, I guess that's a phase one. So you can see how Macy's, if we're already starting over the period of the next six weeks, but Macy's shares flat so far, but quite the drop off recently from you're talking about $18 at the beginning of the year. We hit 438, we're currently trading at 607 for Macy's. Other news, Comcast post dramatic drop in Q1 profit despite cable and broadband bumps amid coronavirus stay at home. 2.1 billion for Comcast in net income for the first quarter. That's roughly 40% lower than the first quarter last year when they earned 3.5 billion. Revenue jumped 4.5% year over year, helped by a 52% surge specifically in wireless revenue. The company's filmed entertainment revenue fell 22.5% year over year, and theme park revenue fell 31.9. You know, Disney out with their earnings next week. Um, revenue from theme parks, non-existent for the last seven weeks, at least probably six weeks. CMCSA, uh, we're gonna open a little bit lower, but you see the dive from 47 to 31, back to 39, and this morning for a shorter time frame, we're trading down a bit. You gotta pop on that news. We have the conference call beginning at 8.30. This is a 15-minute bar, and we're trading lower on that conference call number. We're now bidding 38.21 by 38.50. Other action out there, stocks making moves. Kraft Heinz reported quarterly profit, 58 cents a share, three cents above estimates. Revenue also topping expectations. Organic sales rose 6.2%. Kraft Heinz benefited from the increased de consumer demand related to the COVID-19 pandemic. There's your volatility, opening about 60 cents higher at 31.15 from 30.53. Cigna with their earnings, 4.69 a share. They were looking for 4.35. Revenue also above forecast. Cigna, CI as their shares, trading a bit higher from 195 up to 203, right now at 199. We covered Microsoft, covered Facebook, we covered Tesla's rant, we did not cover their profits yet though, as I mentioned. So to get into the numbers, there's Tesla. Earnings per share, $1.24, revenue 5.99. The market was expecting an adjusted loss of 36 cents a share. How about that? However, estimates varied widely and comparing Tesla's actual results with estimates isn't straightforward given the difficulty of what's going on with the coronavirus. Company reported GAAP profit during the first quarter of 16 million. Uh, pulling up Tesla again, quite a pop they got of like $60, $80. Yeah, we're at $8.55, up about $55, but trailing off a bit, as you can see from that. Uh, when the conference call began, things have tapered a bit, but still quite a performance for Tesla in the last 90 days. What else do we have happening? What kind of headlines I got up here? Qualcomm, beating estimates by 10 cents a share with quarterly profit of 88 cents a share. Revenue beat consensus as well. Qcom, those shares so far, after their numbers last night, spiked to 83.01. Right now you're trading at about 79.40, up about 40 cents, pairing a lot of those gains last night that we did have there. eBay out with their numbers, 77 cents a share, five cents above estimates. Revenue topped estimates as well. The company said its marketplace business has been helped by worldwide shelter in place orders and it gave stronger than expected guidance for full year earnings and revenue. Not pulling guidance, giving stronger than expected guidance. Got a 
still love that, but check that out. Talk about some volatility on their numbers last night. From 41 almost to 36.70, you've trailed lower. You're down about $1.40 at 37.61 on eBay shares. Exxon Mobil, they reported they're going to maintain their quarterly dividend of 87 cents a share at a time when, of course, many in that industry are giving it up to conserve cash. Royal Dutch Shell, they did just that, slashing their dividend by two thirds. Exxon, I mean, we just talked about oil just went from $10 to 17 this month. You see the acceleration up to 49. We're going to open just a bit in the positive for Exxon shares so far this morning at 47.71. Checking in on two of the companies with earnings after the bell. Amazon shares up a bit, 30 so dollars, $40 almost at 24.10, getting a little bit of a pop this morning. And Apple shares as well, 289 right now from 287. We're up to 293.50. As we get both of those numbers I'm sure after the best. You Stay are tuned. Or the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as our number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got markets sliding to negative territory a bit. That's American Airlines. They're out with their numbers as well this morning. American trading from 1263 up to 1356 overnight, but this morning reporting their numbers and dropping to 1182. American 
There's your number, 2.2 billion, the loss in the first quarter as the coronavirus roiled air travel. Jumping back to the weekly jobless claims number, so 3.84 million, we're over 30 million over the last six weeks. Taking a look at a little bit of a trend. So last week's number was revised upward by 15,000 to 4.4 million. You do see the trend trailing down. It's pretty tough when you look at last week was 4.4 million, this week now coming in at 3.84 million. We're still almost at four million. If we're trailing off in a small degree, man, it's going to be a rough go as these things continue. Hopefully some of those uh, jobs that were lost as the economy reopens, those people coming back into the labor force. Uh, this talks about that they may be undercounting. Yeah, uh, where were we? I had it. Okay, we'll jump back into it. But uh, that talks about, of course, the GDP down 4.8. Here we go. Here's what I had. I want to talk about the Economic Policy Institute earlier this week estimated that the current claims level probably undercounts by as much as 12 million. Those who are eligible for benefits but not getting them due to inability to file or other roadblocks. Uh, it's definitely some number, folks, that people are out there that aren't employed that haven't hit those rules yet. Not sure what that number is. Final check on the S&Ps, down almost a full percent, 29.13. You see the drop off from the 8.30 jobs number even. We're up at 29.30. We've lost almost a full percent on that number. Stay tuned, folks. We got Larry Pesavento coming up live with Trade What You See. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Basil Chapman filling in for Tom. And don't forget, folks. You got time. It's starting right at 9 o'clock. Quite a day for it. Weekly jobless claims, almost 4 million. Check it out. Timing the Trade webinar with Tom O'Brien. Sign up. You'll gain instant access to that trading room. I'm going to jump in there right now between 9 and 10 o'clock before my program. And I uh, hope to see you in there. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. And we'll be right back with Larry Pesavento coming up live with Trade What You See.